on the first line. Then the colloid goiter. Here no epithelial hyperplasia will be seen. So you will find follicles which have large amounts of colloid because now the thyroid hormone levels are normal. So you don't need the hyperplasia. For what? Then again, you know, there will be more areas of hemorrhage, fibrosis, dystrophic calcification, and ultimately it will lead to the formation of multinodular coit. Okay? Hyperplasia, colloid. Hyperplasia, colloid. Hyperplasia, colloid, ultimately causing many, many nodules. So this is the multinodular coit. Here you will find hyperplastic areas as well as the colloid area. Some of the areas will be hyperplastic, some nodules will be hyperplastic, some may be colloid. So here is the multinodularity. So etiology. Now what is the etiology? Most common is the lack of iodine. So this is very important. Most common is the lack of iodine. Then sometimes inherited enzyme defects which are responsible for synthesis of T3 and T4. Okay? Then hypercalcemia also can interfere with the hormone production. If there is hypercalcemia, it interferes with the hormone product. This is the homework for you. You see which enzyme is affected, how it affects the synthesis of the thyroid. You go home and read about it. So hypercalcemia will lead to decreased hormone production. And also there are some vegetables belonging to the cruciferin family. They also interfere with the synthesis of the thyroid. Like cabbage, cauliflower, these are the cruciferin family. It can also lead to this. So if a person is taking more, if there is more calcium, it can lead to hypothyroidism. If he is eating more of these vegetables, it can also lead to hypothyroidism. Okay, these are the causes. Then there are some drugs like lithium, amiodarone, okay, sulfonylureas, resorcinol. So you have to take the history of the patient. Sometimes you cannot find a cause. But he is diabetic, taking saponin ureas. So because of that saponin ureas, he can have this. Huh? Or he is taking lithium, he has some psychotic problem. He can have hypothyroidism. <coughs> so this is how you will proceed. If you cannot find a cause, history is important. Pathogenesis, you know. D3, D4 degrees, increased TSH, which will stimulate the hyperplasia and hypertrophy. <coughs> It causes the enlargement of the gland, then bigger and small follicles, then again hormone fluctuation, ultimately leading to the multi-nodularity. This is pathologically. You will find diffuse, simple goiter involving the whole gland, or you will find later stages multi-nodular goiter. Huh? Two types of goiter pathologically. Epidemiologically, you have two types. What do you mean by epidemiology? <laughs> Yeah. So sporadic means it can happen any year. Okay. One person here, one person maybe here. Huh? So endemic, what do you mean by endemic now? It says in a local population, if it involves more than 10 percent of the population, we say it's endemic. Right? Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. so in a community, if it involves more than 10 percent of the population, this is endemic. <coughs> it happens in the Himalayas. Where the people are taking less of this. Previously, you know, China and Indian areas, Himalayas, especially in the mountainous areas. So they used to take less of IOD, so they have more chances of getting the goiters. So that's why Japanese race is the risk factor. What? Japanese race is the risk factor. Japanese have this just because of IOD death. I have, uh, you know, I have seen China, Indian, Himalayan regions are more poor. Japanese, I don't know. Uh, uh, we get more of the hill, we have this very of the Japanese But hypothyroid. But what is the cause? The how is it going to More of this, I don't know about this. What I know, I can tell you. More common in the mountainous regions, Himalayas, here you find the Everest and other yes. big mountains. And the China, the associated Tibet and Nepal, these are the areas where you find more mountains. And sporadic due to nitrogenous substances or enzyme deficiency. If it is occurring somewhere, you know, in a locality, only one person is affected or two persons are affected, it may be due to some enzymatic deficiency, like congenital enzyme deficiency, or due to 
eating of the clitrogen substance like the vegetables of the crucifer family. Okay, so it can occur because of that. Now what you find diffuse colloid coiler. This is the diffuse, this is the multinodular. Try to understand. Diffuse has two stages. First is the hyperplastic stage, second is the colloid involution stage. Okay? So it comes in two stages. Diffuse soft symmetric enlargement and mostly it is eothyroid. So when the gland is enlarged, so it will compensate for the thyroid hormone. So thyroid hormone levels you will find not. Okay? No hormone stages. So there will be normal thyroid hormone levels because the gland has enlarged and it is compensated. <coughs> then recurrent episodes of stimulation and involution. Hyperplasia, involution. Hyperplasia so leads to lobulation in the gland. Asymmetric lobulation. There is variability. Hyperplastic areas you will find collide areas. Some of the collide areas will rupture and form cysts, big cysts. Stromal hemorrhage, scars, cysts and calcification. And these are the mass effects. Because when the gland becomes big and big, what it will cause? Ma mass effects. What do you mean by mass effects? Sure. Yeah. It will affect the other organs. Yes. This is the mass. So it can compress. It can compress trachea. Esophagus. So esophagus, there will be dysphagia. Isn't it? And if we compress the trachea, respiratory problem will be there, stridor will be there. So mass effects and sometimes some of the nodules can become toxic. Very much hyperplastic nodule, it will secrete too much hormone. So you can have hyperthyroidism in a body. If some of the nodule in a multinodule garden, one of the nodules can become toxic. Because hyperplasia is there. Sometimes it can be so hyperplastic that it secretes a lot of, lot of hormone. So that will so be, be yeah. It can be, it can. Be. One other nodule in a multinodular goiter can become toxic nodule. Okay. So the reason is not the in the multinodular. He is eutyroid, but if one nodule becomes toxic, so it will be thyroboxic instead of eutyroid. It will be thyroboxic. But all the patients will not have that. Some of the patients. So this is the picture yesterday that you have seen. Variable follicles, some big, some small, filled with colloid. This is enlargement. What are the mass effects? Airway obstruction. If it compresses the trachea, dysphagia. And in this, there can be hemorrhage, there can be scar, there can be calcification within the gland. Because these are all secondary changes which are prone to occur. And it may mask the new plastic disease. Sometimes you have a carcinoma and you have multinodal glider also. So it will be masked. The doctor cannot, you know, it is big. So he will do the FNC from here. He will find nothing. He will find goiter. Do the FNC, goiter. So he can mask some of the small swellings which may be new plastic. Then toxic hyperfunctioning nodule. As I said, one of the nodule can be hyperfunctioning. It will lead to hyperthyroidism. But there will be no ophthalmic signs. Like proptosis will not be there. So this is known as plumber syndrome. Plumber syndrome means there is a toxic nodule in a multinodular guide which causes hyperthyroidism. Okay? Without eye signs. Without eye signs of proptosis, which are seen in Graves disease. So this is how you will differentiate between them. Clear? Yeah. Now coming to Graves disease. So Graves disease. It is an organ specific disease. So it involves only one organ. That is the thyroid gland. So organ specific autoimmune disease of the thyroid gland. And there are three features in the Graves disease. What are the three features? So first of all, it will be hyperfunctioning of the thyroid gland, which is thyrotoxicosis. Okay? Hyperfunctioning of the thyroid gland, first thing. Thyrotoxicosis. Second, ophthalmopathy. Yes. Eye signs, which are seen in 40 percent of the cases. There will be protrusion of the eyeball, which is also known as proptosis. And in a minority of patients, you will see dermatopathy. Okay, dermopathy, infiltrating. So here you will find here. Yeah, and tibial myxedema. There will be a swelling here, in front of the tibia. Yeah. 
So there will be free TPL myxedema in Graves' disease. Myxedema, hypothyroidism, but here free TPL myxedema. Here also you will find free TPL myxedema. Minority of the cases. So epidemiology at a younger age, 20 to 40, more common in women, 7 to 1. Genetic predisposition is there. Some, it is associated with very important HLA B8 and DR3. B8 and DR3. This is the association with the HLA antigens. Now, what is the pathogenesis? Pathogenesis. You know what are the things which are involved in the immunity? What are the things? Oh, transitions. Immunoglobin. No, normally, I am asking. Please stand. So anybody can tell me? Yes. In normal immunity, what do you have? Immunoglobulins or antibodies. Second? Lymphocytes. Lymphocytes. Which type of it? TNP. TNP. What are the types of T cells? T helper. T toxic. T helper. Very good. Regulatory T cells, suppressor T cells, helper T cells, and cytotoxic T cells, and natural killer cells. Okay? So these are the many things which are involved. So here, what is the basic dysfunction? The helper T cells, it is the pathogenesis is breakdown in the helper T cell tolerance. You know, you your body has tissues. Okay. Why a foreign protein introduced in the person and the body reacts? You also have the proteins. Isn't it? Just think. So it means your immune system can recognize you. It can recognize you. It doesn't react against you. So this is the tolerance. Suppose if somebody at the back is doing some mischief, but I am not saying anything. So this is the tolerance. I am tolerating. This is how you understand. So I am tolerating. But what happens here? There is breakdown in the T cell tolerance. Even if he is not saying anything, he is not doing anything bad, but I will go and attack him. Oh, why you are this and that? So this is the breakdown in the tolerance. So your helper cells are very good. A person with grave disease, he has the helper cells, they, they are very good, they are not attacking him. But when there is grave disease, they will start attacking They will start attacking the thyroid gland. So this is how it occurs. Why is it moving? So there is breakdown in the T cell tolerance. There are three types again. Anti-TSH receptor antibodies are three types. Thyroid stimulating antibody, 
thyroid growth stimulating antibody and thyroid inhibiting antibody. What do you mean by these? Three types are here. These are not much important. Because this, this is the most important. DSS receptor stimulating antibody. Yes. This is the stimulating antibody. But all of these are not stimulating. Uh, the thyroid and the, the thyroid inhibitor. Good. There is one type which is called thyroid stimulating. It will have the same function as you know the attachment of the TSH. If this antibody attaches to the thyroid cell, it will also cause increased formation of the T3 and T4. Same. Okay. Although it is anti-TSH, because anti-TSH in a way that it is not allowing the TSH to bind. Yes. But functioning is same. Yeah. It acts the same way. TSH binding will cause the formation of T3, T4. This antibody also binds and causes the formation of T3, T4. This is called thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin. Same function as TSH. Another is thyroid growth stimulating antibody. It doesn't cause the formation of T3, T4 directly, but when it attaches, it causes the hyperplasia of the gland. Hyperplasia. Yeah. So when there is hyperplasia, more cells, so more formation of T3. So this is an indirect way of stimulating. Another is thyroid inhibitor antibody. If it binds, it leads to inhibition of the function. So this is why some of the great disease patients in between have hypothyroidism. And these antibodies are more common, so they have sometimes hypothyroidism. So there are also stages, like in hypothyroid, multinodal localities. You can sometimes find, find hyperthyroidism due to toxic nodules. So here in Graves disease, sometimes you will find some stages at which there is hypothyroidism. It is due to thyroid inhibiting antibodies. Clear? Yes, yes, yes. Mostly, mostly it is stimulating, but sometimes if you find there is hypothyroidism in a grave disease patient, already know, it means the thyroid inhibiting antibodies are more is this time, okay? But most of the time the stimulating antibodies will be more. So this is, this will show you why there is protrusion of eyeballs also. So genetic clonal lack, because helper cells will be suppressed, the helper cells in your body which can act against your thyroid gland, they are suppressed by some cells. This is the normal tolerance, how the tolerance will be there. There are suppressor cells. They suppress these helper. Although the helper cells are there which can recognize your thyroid. They are there, but they are suppressed. So this is a cell, this is a suppressor cell. So normally this tells, oh no, this is my thyroid, don't touch it. This is my thyroid, don't touch it. Okay? Yeah. But if there is something wrong with this. There is some lack of these suppressor cells or there is some genetic mutation in this, what will happen? This suppress, suppression will be gone. So helper cells will be active now. They are not being suppressed. So they will go and attack the thyroid. Okay? So what will they do? They will not directly attack the thyroid. They will stimulate the B cells which form the antibodies. These antibodies go to the thyroid and cause the symptoms. Okay? Like they will increase the B3 and T4. And these antibodies will also go to the eye. There is a TSH receptor there also. Isn't it? Ah, there is a TSH receptor behind the eye, you know. Many cells have TSH receptor. So they can bind to the TSH receptor antibodies in the retroorbital connective tissue. Yeah. So once they attach to it, there is more formation of the connective tissue, more glycosamine and glycans. And they, these antibodies, whenever the antibodies are reacting, they will also stimulate the inflammation. So more inflammatory cells will come there. Okay? So more inflammation will be there, there will be more connective tissue and it will lead to edema behind. So the eyeball will come. Okay? So antibodies here bind to the retroorbital connective tissue. T cells will produce more inflammation. Okay? So it will lead to more glycosamine and glycans. Because of stimulation of the cells. Poor cytokines, poor stimulation of the cells, poor glycosamine and glycans. Uh, this uh, stimulating leads to the adipose uh, genesis. Yeah, it can lead to adipogenesis also. Fibroblasts differentiate to adipose side. Yeah, good, good. So this is one more thing. So I will come back. There is more inflammation. There are more glycosamine of glycans because of stimulation of the TSH receptor. And also there is more genesis of the fat. Not only this, glycosamine and glycans increase this, uh, what do you say, inflammation and increase fat. All these things will be there. So they will push the eyeball out. So this is how it occurs. Huh? 
and you can find swelling in the muscle and connective tissue behind. So this is the reason for ophthalmopathy. Yes. So antibodies, they will not only attack the, this. So we say a organ specific disease. So in a way it is not organ specific, it affects the eyes also. And the next? Yeah, it can affect the breathing, it can cause and breathing will mix it Same, same will be feature. there, same features. Same. Okay. same swelling, same hardness will be there in that. Is it clear? From here. Yes, you can ask me. 